Hi everyone, this is Garezo here and welcome to Garezo workflow number 4. The animation you're watching right now was created just for fun in the week before the great Wimbledon finals. So let's do it! As always, you can get the project files for this and all the other animations on my Gun Road page, where I'm also slowly making available the project files for some past animations, and that really helps to support the channel as well. Alright, so in this never-ending quest of deciding what to draw or animate next, I came across Google Trends. I'm not sure if you guys ever heard about it, which basically gives you the search trends for any country in the world. You can even change, let's say, I wanna United States. This is where I saw that the Wimbledon tournament was happening. So you can see what people are talking about. Like, let's see what's, what's happening to Jackie Chan. And the good thing about using something that's trending on your animation is that you can probably take advantage of that to promote your work on social media. Alright, so after giving it some thought, I was kind of happy with the idea I had in mind. So I just sketched these crappy little thumbnails here on this crappy little piece of paper. So as you can see here is the first player with the ball in the center approaching. Here's the racket behind the ball, just in the close-up. The ball over the net, hitting the floor and moving towards the next player so we have the loop. If there was a client involved, I would definitely translate that to a proper storyboard. But as I'm the client and I like what's inside my head, it's approved. This time, even before designing anything, I wanted to test the movement, especially because of the tricky camera movement that goes around the ball and away from the players. So I went straight into anime to do the rough pass. I also went to YouTube to find some good references for the movement of the players. And I found this one here that I really liked and I was referring back to a lot especially because I could see the front and the back of the players at the same time and I was trying to find the best silhouette so I could make the movement easier to read in just a few frames. So I started with this keyframe here where I had the clear reading of every element in the scene. I have the, the player here, the ball, the stands here and the court. So for me this is the most important frame in the animation and as always I do it very roughly in the beginning just to get the movement right. So I worked backwards and forwards from that point imagining where the player would be in relation to the camera and the ball and then as the camera moves around the ball I went straight to this keyframe here I drew this keyframe where, where the camera is perpendicular to the court and as always backwards and forwards adding in betweens and as you can see here I'm working mostly on twos but sometimes when the action is too fast or if it needs more information to describe the movement I do it on ones and always making use of the onion skinning so we make sure our shapes are aligning properly so we have a smooth movement. So with the rough pass done, we know the animation is working, so, so now it's just a matter of making it look pretty, but that's the most time consuming part as well. This time, as I wanted a very hand painted look, I decided to use Photoshop to create my style frame. So I imported one frame from the rough pass to use as a guide, but before I started the illustration here, I did some silhouette tests in another file just to get the proportions of the players right. This is a technique that I've been trying lately which consists basically of blocking the main shapes of the character without wasting time with any details. Unfortunately I was working on the same layer all the time so there's no way to see the progress on this one, just the final image that I went for. I did this quick test here just to try to illustrate how I was working at this step. For me, it feels like sculpting a character out of a block. And the good thing is that you have to make your silhouettes readable. And that's awesome for animation as well. Okay, so after I was happy with the proportions, I went back to the other file. I started doing the same thing here, filling the shapes with color. At first with a solid color, pretty much like this. And then with alpha lock, I came back and, and painted the details. Something like this, but with more precision, of course. I tried some different brushes to get this hand-painted look. I ended up using one of Kyle's Webster's oil brushes, which is this Oil Rich B, which creates this nice 
hand-painted look. If you're not familiar with Kyle's brushes, I highly recommend you to get them. They are really high quality brushes. And if you have a paid Creative Cloud membership, you can get them for no extra cost. And all you have to do is to open your brushes panel, click on the small gear icon here, and select Get More Brushes. This will take you to Adobe's website where you can download one of his packs. The one I downloaded is the Mega Pack, which comes with tons of brushes. But if you don't have a membership, I'm sure you can find some good free brushes as well or some packs that you can buy. Okay, so this is our final style frame. So now I had to figure out how to translate that into animation. I could have done the cleanup in Adobe Animate or even using shape layers in After Effects, applying some filters and texture on top of the layers. But in the end, I decided to do the core of the animation inside Photoshop, except for the ball and the background, the stands and the sky. Anyway, there's always a thousand of ways to do things in animation. And I guess it's always good to try some different techniques because then you know the strengths of each one of them. So for the animation, I rendered the rough pass and placed in the layer for reference. The ball animation and the green in the background were done in After Effects, but we don't really need that information to do the animation in Photoshop. That's just because it didn't work quite linearly as I'm explaining it here. But I'll get to that shortly. Let's focus on Photoshop right now. Anyway, so here I'm using a Nim the Sim 2, which is a great extension to help frame by frame animation in Photoshop. And it's a bit tricky to install. By the way, I'm on Photoshop CC 2018, just because as far as I know, a Nim the Sim 2 is not compatible yet with CC 2019. But anyway, I'll put a link in the description where you find all the information you need to install it. So here, what I did pretty much was to paint every frame using the brush I chose, each time drawing one of the elements, for example, the floor frame by frame, trying to match the lines and get the perspective working using the reference as a guide. And then and the wall, then the player, then adding all the other details in passes until we have all the animation, the shadows, the lines, the net, the pole, everything done in passes, one at a time. And for the players, I did one pass pretty much like this, just with the silhouette. I went back frame by frame with the alpha lock selected and painted the same way I did on the design phase. So that's pretty much it in Photoshop. This is what I exported to After Effects. So here I placed the Photoshop render in a timeline and started working on the other elements, the ball, the crowd, the stands, and the sky. To create the ball, I applied CC Sphere to a pre-comp. So if you look here, there's CC Sphere. If you take it off, you see that this comp is pretty much a solid and a shape layer and the turbulent displays to get a little bit of rough edges here. The way CC Sphere wraps the texture around the ball is not very intuitive. So one thing that I usually do to help figure out how I should design the texture to make it look the way I want it to look when wrapped around the sphere is to do a quick Google search for textures. So then you have some hints of how you have to design your texture to make it look the way you want. So in this case, I tried this shape here and then it's just a matter of tweaking until you get the texture you want. So one thing you can do to make it easier is just to open another comp viewer, then go back to your comp. Let's turn the CC sphere back on. You just have to make sure you have the comp locked so you can see both of them at the same time. So this is a bit of trial and error, but that's the way I usually do it. After I was happy with the texture, I animated the rotation properties and the radius to simulate the hits and reversing the movement as it's going away from the camera at this point. After I was happy with the animation, I applied some CC force motion blur to blur the texture because the normal motion blur doesn't read the CC sphere movement. Then I applied a turbulent displace with a small size to get the rough edges and another one with a larger size to make it less perfect and suggest that this was made by hand. And other than that, just some curves and hue saturation for 
a little bit of color correction and that's it for the ball let's go back to the main comp this stance is just a shape layer animated frame by frame using hold keyframes and for the crowd instead of painting every single dot by hand what I did was to create a large comp with a solid the same size of the comp let me just deactivate all the effects here first so here I apply the fractal noise and a three tone effect using the colors from my style frame and then I apply the CC bow action on top of it tweak the settings to get some randomness and then I rotated everything to make it look like it's a stand so you get this then rotating minus 54 in case and other than that it's just some color correction to get rid of the of the shading that CC bow action gives which unfortunately we don't have control on the settings here let's go back to the other comp here I apply the same turbulent displays to get the rough edges and also more color correction here and that's pretty much it for the look then using the render as a guide I animated the position and the scale using hold keyframes to match the animation and then on the main comp I apply the CC lens effect to get this kind of wide lens effect distorting on the edges and some noise to give some more texture as well the sky is pretty much the same idea it's just one large layer that I painted on Photoshop and imported here and then animate it to match and that's it one last thing I did after everything was ready and after I found out which players would be on the finals which were Federer and Djokovic I just went back to Photoshop and painted some details to the players to try to make them look like the real players this is Federer and this is Djokovic and to make it look properly I duplicated the loop and in one of the loops I had Federer here and in the other one I had Djokovic here so Djokovic to Federer and then Federer to Djokovic and that's it I hope you guys have enjoyed this workflow and as always if you like these videos please subscribe to the channel hit the like button and share with your friends thanks for watching and I see you next time